All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Forge Your Life podcast. Here today with your host, Richard Fu from richardfu.com, the place to be for the mindset, purpose, health, wealth, and love. And today, guys, we're talking about business. Today, we got an amazing guy on the show. His name is Paul Holland. He's a video preneur he helps people master themselves on the video on the on this little machine that i'm using right now on my phone to capture an amazing video that's going to bring out authenticity truth and my earplug as well at the same time but it's all about getting the real, the real stuff out there and i'm excited to have him on the show because he's not just a video man he is a digital master and he's the founder of video ties so guys please welcome paul holland to the show paul great to have you on hey rich thanks for having me on man it's really good to be here talking to you Oh, man, I'm excited, man. I'm always excited to learn more about video because, you know, man, Paul, I mean, a bit about me, man. I'm not sure if you've seen, if you watch some of my YouTube videos for the first, like, seriously, the first 100 episodes I did, it was horrendous. I was forcing it to happen. I was trying to make things work. And then only the last part, like, you know, 100 episodes would be okay. And I've taken a bit of a break from that. And I want to get more about learning about video for myself and for the viewers here, especially those business owners out there who are building a personal brand as well. But before we get into that, man, I mean, could you share a bit more about yourself, Paul, and how you actually got into the digital marketing space? Yeah, yeah, no worries, man. I mean, I'm originally from New Zealand. Uh, now I live on the, the Gold Coast in Australia. Um, but I had a 15-year stint working in the film and television industry in New Zealand. Um, mm -hmm. So I spent a lot of time, I was a cameraman, so I spent a lot of time uh, behind the lens uh, working on a lot of different projects, you know, a lot of... Uh, corporate communications, a lot of documentaries, some, some big Hollywood films, um, and had a, a fantastic career with that. It was, it was really great. But sort of after 15 years of it, um, a good chunk of my work was what sort of falls into the uh, reality TV space. Yeah. And yeah. that for me wasn't fulfilling. Uh, there was sort of no creativity to it, nothing to it. So that's when I, I packed it up. I moved to Australia and I actually uh, went feet first and bought a small business. I had no idea what I was doing, but just, you know, I'd been self-employed for a long time, but it was just me with a camera. Um, yeah. And I didn't want to go work for someone else. So I jumped in and I bought a little importing business. And I had that for three years. And in the course of that three years, I learned a lot about running small business, marketing a small business, um, dealing with people, managing staff members, uh, yeah. all sorts of great lessons. Um, it was a really good experience, but I did miss the, the, the creative side of things and working with video. And uh, a couple of friends had sort of started to, they knew my background, they'd asked me to help them out with projects and I started moving back towards doing video work. So I, I sold the importing business and uh, that's when Video Ties was created and uh, went down the market of helping business owners with their marketing using video as a marketing tool. Um, and that's been years and years and years now doing that. Amazing, man. Amazing. And for you to jump away from the camera into an importing business and then back on, back onto the camera side, I think it's amazing, man. And talk us through this, man. I mean, like, you know, with what's happening in marketing now, and I know you do more than just video, Paul. I mean, like, why, why did you go back into video and you start using that as marketing and rather than going back to what you were doing before, which is like documentaries and movies? Um, it's really interesting, actually. There was sort of an event that happened that, really just sort of triggered an awareness for me. Um, mm. In my previous career working in New Zealand, I'd done a lot of corporate videos and I didn't really put too much thought in them. I was thinking about them as the cameraman. I was there and filming them and wanting them to look good, but I wasn't really putting a lot of thought to the end result of them. Um, but I did hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them over, over the years. Um, but what happened, the event that actually happened was that in my importing business, we had a new uh, shipment of stock come in and I put together a little slideshow video of photos um, of us unloading the container and then photos of the new product. And I put it together, I threw it up on Facebook, and our sales just went straight up, straight away. And I was like, holy shit, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've never used video in that business before. Um, but that one little video showcasing the new product, and um, yeah, our sales went straight up. So I was like, oh, there's something in this using video. And that sort of sparked that. And then it made me think back to those hundreds and hundreds of corporate videos and go, well, it's a perfect communication tool. It's feeding information to people in the way that we like to consume it. You know, if we're visual, we can watch it. The auditory people can hear it. Kinesthetic people who, who get a feeling for things can still get a feeling for something through the visual medium. Mm -hmm. um, so when I sort of started moving back into video, it was sort of just becoming more and more obvious that 
that was the way to go. YouTube was growing as a bigger and bigger force. Google had bought YouTube. So, you know, you could look into the future and say, well, Google's obviously prioritizing video uh, as internet speeds get faster. You know, it's just going to become more and more the norm. And now we see it in our everyday lives with, with things like Netflix. Um, yeah. You know, you don't even need a television anymore if you want that level of entertainment. It's all available online. Um, so yeah, the thought was there's, there's gotta be a way here to start, you know, delivering things with video. And in those early sort of days, um, a lot of my clients were in the personal development space and they were they're coaches or speakers. So there was a huge element of personal branding and the more time I spent with them and the more I got to understand their businesses, the more I realized that they needed to build connection and trust with their audience. Um, just like any business owner really does. But at those early days, it was your speaker and your trainer and your coach. And it was like those people need high levels of connection and trust with their audience. And to me, video was the best way they could do that online. Uh, love it. And I love the way that you, you phrase it and you frame it up that it sounds like marketing. A lot of people think of marketing as just a way to generate leads. But if you think about it, you, the only way you generate leads is by building that trust, by building that connection. And I love that you tie this in so well with what's happening now is that you need the video on there. And so, I mean, like for the people who are starting out of the business, right? Or for the people who have their own business at the moment, they're not doing any video. What would you recommend they actually start doing? And how would, how would they structure a video actually, right? And how long should it be? And what are the key things you think they should actually incorporate in their videos? Yeah, cool. Look, I mean, if someone's in business and they're not using video, um, generally a lot of people would have the idea that they do need to be using video. They're just not quite sure where to start. Yeah. Uh, a really simple place to start that's, that is non confronting for you as the business owner is actually video testimonials because it puts your clients on the spot rather than putting you on the spot, but it's a great way to get started and actually get some video that's going to be valuable to your business. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you can shoot it on your phone. You know, most people have a smartphone these days and the cameras in them are great. So you don't need a professional production. And in fact, with testimonials, it's actually been, um, there was a study done in the States and it was proven that testimonials that are a little bit edgy and a little bit rough actually are more believable than sort of polished studio produced testimonials. Um, mm. So that's a really good place to start. Just get your phone out, ask your customer how their experience was with you. Yeah. The next step from that, I believe every business should have a, a video on the homepage of their website. Um, yep. When someone comes to your website, however they get there, whether it's an ad or an organic search, um, you know, you've got a few seconds to grab them. And I believe that people want quick and easy answers to the, the problem that they're trying to solve when they've come to your website. And a video can deliver that information to them really quickly and easily. So I think everybody should have a video on the homepage of their website. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of those technical questions around how long and how to structure it, um, I think that introductory video, 60 to 90 seconds is, is plenty. You're not mm -hmm. trying to sort of save the world and tell everyone everything you do. You just want to let them know um, that you have a solution to their problem. You know, if mm -hmm. your companies mm -hmm. have a problem that you're solving, you need to let them know that. If you're structuring the video, um, your script wants to be about the client and about what you can do for the client. Uh, yeah. not all about me, me, me. So um, often a really good way is to start with a question. So if you go to my website, the video there with me starts with something along the lines of, are you looking for someone to help you with video production or video marketing? So you ask mm -hmm. that in your business. Uh, you know, if you're an accountant, you say, you know, are you looking to, for someone to help you with doing the books, doing the taxes, doing your bookkeeping, dealing with the tax department? All of those sort of things. Because if someone's come to your website looking for those things, you're going to get an unconscious yes. They're going to be going, yep, that's me. And that's earning you the right to continue talking to them. So generally, I'd start by asking you a question, then do a little introduction. You know, I'm mm -hmm. Paul for Video Ties, and we help business owners with video. And then yep. offer your solution. And then at the end of the video, offer a little call to action. Um, yep. You know, keep it soft. Don't say, buy my stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, if you'd like some more details, you know, click below and, and send yeah. us an email or, or download my free report, whatever it is. But yeah, make sure at the end of your video, you're asking them to take some action. So you've got the opportunity to capture someone's details, build a database and, and start a conversation with them. Mm, beautiful, Paul. And I love the way you distill it so simply. It's like, first get that question in to enroll the person. Just pretty much like qualify that person if they landed on your website. You know, make sure that they're the right type of person. Otherwise, oh, look, this is not you. Keep 
keep moving on and I'm not going to waste your time here trying to keep you on the page. And then I love the, the fact that you introduce yourself and you say you keep it short. It's basically the elevator pitch, right? Do it, give them enough to know what you do, but then don't tell them everything, right? Because you try and tell them everything, then they feel like you're getting sold and it's like, all right, I'm yep. done. Right? Yeah, I exactly. love the way you break. You don't, to, you don't want to overload people. You just want them, you know, if, they have, if, if someone's looking for tax advice or a good accountant and they've come to your accounting website, they just want to know that you, they're in the right place and that you have something that's valuable to them and then mm. they can take the next step. Mm, love it, man. Love it. And Ooh. so what's the next step here, Paul? I mean, like once you have a video on your website, I mean, the next side I think of video is like the social side, right? Where we build that trust, we build that connection, we show people our lives, the business, how we run it, those kind of things. But like, how should businesses operate with that? I mean, like, give us an example of one of the clients that you're working with at the moment, how they're doing more video and that's leading to creating more leads for them. Yeah, cool. Okay, great. Um, you know, beyond that initial video, there's so many different things you can do uh, mm -hmm. from testimonials to case studies to tutorials and how to. Um, just thinking of a client that's a good example. Um, actually, uh, so a client of mine, Daniel, hmm. uh, and Daniel is a podiatrist. He has, he has two podiatry clinics down in, um, Sydney, alternative yep. foot solutions is the name of his business. Uh, we've been working together for about three years, I guess now. And with Daniel, we've done a range of things. So he has got that introductory video on his homepage. Uh, absolutely. Yep. We've done a whole lot of video blogs, um, with Daniel, which have all been about addressing different issues that people have, uh, different questions that they have around podiatry, around the service that he offers, around different problems with their feet. I mean, we've probably done uh, 30 or 40 of them. I'd have to you know, have a look. But they're all educational. So those videos are all on his website. They're all there and easily accessible. But they then um, get used for other purposes. So uh, there's an email newsletter uh, that goes out every week that we send out on his behalf. Uh, and often that contains one of the videos, probably three out of four, three out of five video of uh, his newsletters actually have a video. So it's like, here's some information about X, Y, Z. Uh, you know, bunions is a big thing for, for him. He treats a lot of people with bunions. So um, a lot of the videos are around treating bunions or after treatment of bunions or shoes that you can wear that won't be uncomfortable with bunions. It's all just providing information. It's all just providing great value for his customers. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of video blogs like that. Uh, we've then got a uh, we've got a lead funnel in place that runs off Facebook ads. So we've right. got a Facebook ad that leads to a landing page. Uh, that's mm -hmm. actually download a free report. Uh, once you've downloaded the free report, the next page actually has a five minute video on it. Um, mm -hmm. And again, about bunions, funnily enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was great. Uh, when we originally scripted up that video, and this is a, a graphics video, so Daniel's not actually in this one. This is actually just all text and uh, voiceover and graphics. Yeah. Um, when we scripted it up with him, it actually came up at, it's nearly six minutes long. Yeah. And we had a bit of discussion around, well, is it too long? Are people going to tune in? And we said, well, there's only one way to know, and that's to make it and find out. Mm -hmm. And what we've discovered, and this is really good knowledge to have, um, you download the, the free report, you go to the page with the video on it. It's a six minute video. It's got an 85% completion rate for a six minute wow. video. Now, most people are watching 30 seconds to 60 seconds of something on the web. You know, to, for people to watch 85% of a six minute video is, is a huge result. And mm. the reason why is that these people have a problem and we've hit their problem, you know, we've hit the nail on the head, so to speak and we're providing them with really valuable information. So from a business owner's point of view, don't be afraid to have slightly longer videos if you're providing you know, a good solution to a problem. Yeah. Um, but that's a really good use of video because then at the end of that video, it offers them to, um, to book an appointment and there's an appointment booking form um, that comes up on the page and they regularly get appointments booked straight through that. So from the funnel of, here's a free report about yeah. bunions, um, yep. They come through, they watch the video, they book an appointment, and they're in the clinic, and, and they've got a really high conversion rate once someone comes into the clinic, so it works really well. Um, nice. The third way that we've used video with, with Daniel really well is actually in his patient follow-up. So right. after someone's been in for the clinic, for their initial um, appointment, first time they've mm -hmm. been in, um, they get put into an email sequence which has a series of videos for them. 
uh, which is all Daniel talking to them, explaining to them what happens next and what the procedure is. Uh, if they go for x-rays, there's a video that goes to them explaining what happens at the x-ray viewing. Um, mm. It's all just designed to follow up and keep coming, people coming back into the clinic. Um, there's also a series of videos. They, the way their business runs is they run a treatment plan. So if you need yeah. attention, you come in and I think it's a 12-week treatment plan. But at the end of that 12 weeks, there's another email sequence that goes out with exercises they can do to make sure that their problems don't recur and things. So, you know, you've got video there as an introductory tool on the website. You've got it as an educational tool in the video blogs. You've got it there as a lead generation and appointment generation tool on the landing pages. And you've also got it there as a client retention tool. So, mm -hmm. you know, sensational how much you can do with it. And they're all pretty simple videos. A lot of them are just Daniel talking to camera. We've added some graphics to them. Uh, yeah. Some of them are just graphics and voiceover. Um, but, you know, relatively simple videos. But developing huge amounts of trust and generating, uh, sorry, delivering huge amounts of value. Mm. And, and I, I see that now. It's just, it's just about creating that connection, right? And then because it's all educational, right, most of these videos, then it creates that authority. Right? Yeah. And when you create that authority, then people trust Daniel, that people trust you more and your business more on what you do because you're speaking with authorities, explaining something for free, right? And I'm guessing like it's, it's tidbits sizes, right? Like five to six, seven minutes long explaining yeah. something. So then people actually get engaged with it. They're like, oh, well, I've seen a lot of Paul's videos, so he must be good. So then when I see him, you know, it feels like I almost know Paul, right? Yeah. And, and how do we do this then? How do we, people like, I'm sure you've worked with like speakers and coaches before and they have to bring in their personal brand out. Right? Yeah. How do you, they bring their personal brand out through the videos? How, what, are, what, have you, what are some of the tips that you've shared with them to say, you know, look, you need to bring more of your personality out. Just have this education, 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 his mindset stuff, his this stuff. But, you know, it's like, how do we bring more of a, someone else out who's like camera shy? Yeah, cool. Um, it goes back to what you said at the start, where you said like your first, you know, first videos on YouTube. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I the new ones are better. Yeah. Um, it, it seriously is something that gets better the more you do it. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen this over and over and over again. And even working with professional speakers, I've had professional speakers who are on stage every week talking. When they get in front of a camera, they sort of clam up because it's a different environment. You know, when you're talking to a camera, you don't have live feedback. You don't have an audience nodding at you and umming and ahhing and agreeing. It's just you and the camera. So it can create that really different environment. So you know, my biggest piece of sort of advice, overriding advice is that people just need to stick at it. The more you do it, the better you will become at it and the easier it will become uh, for you. I personally like to get people to, um, to speak off the cuff and speak uh, casually and not necessarily be too scripted. I believe that, you know, if you are genuinely an expert or genuinely, you know, good at what you do, you know your material. Mm -hmm. um, too many people get caught up in the whole idea of getting it right and saying the right thing. Yes. If I'm talking to you about video, I know that I'm giving you good advice. It doesn't matter what words come out of my mouth or how the sentence yeah. is formed. Yeah. I know I'm going to tell you the right thing. Mm -hmm. I just have to be okay with with saying it however it comes out in that moment. You know, a lot of people get, oh, I, I really want to say it this way. It's like, if you flip it to the audience's point of view, are they going to get value from you if they get that information in a different way? If you don't quite say it the right way, are they still going to get value from that information? And the answer is 99 times out of 100, it's yes. So mm -hmm. it's, it's more uh, being ready to be, being okay with not being perfect. Mm -hmm. And in terms of preparing your material, bullet point it. You know, don't necessarily give yourself a big long script that you want to follow. So if I'm doing a video and I, I must admit, I haven't done any of my own videos for probably a couple of years, but when I am doing videos myself and I'm doing video blogs, I usually give myself three to four bullet points. Yep. Um, I know that I'm always going to start with a question. i will always mm -hmm. start with a question uh, just to hook that viewer in, make sure they know they're watching the right video. Mm -hmm. uh, give a little intro, my name. And then I know I'll have, say, three bullet points. And what I normally do before I shoot the video is, this is my own sort of process, but I'll normally just wander around the house or wander around the office um, mumbling to myself. <laughs> <and sort of laughs> in my head, you know, forming how it is that I want to talk about that bullet point. 
and you know, I'll get to a point where I've got, yep, yeah, that's a, you know, that's a good idea. That's what I'll say, and then I'll do the next one and the next one. And you know, sometimes if I'm driving in the car, I'll just rehearse something on that bullet point. But when I get in front of the camera, I just talk. Now, because I've sort of rehearsed it in my head, generally it comes out sort of in the fashion that I've rehearsed it. Um, it doesn't always come out exactly the same. Most of the time, it won't come out exactly the same way. But I've learned to be okay with that. Like, I, you know, it's very rare for me to do a second take on something now, unless I really stuff something up or I swear unintentionally. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But it's just, yeah, it's being okay with being imperfect, knowing what it is that you want to get across and having that structure to follow. You know, ask a question, mm. intro yourself, give your information, give a call to action. Just mm. follow that structure and then just practice. Yeah. And I, I love, I love how simple you make it and you bring up the most important part. Like, look, it's video nowadays. Have you even said testimonials that are a bit rough around the edges that look like they're being shot on, on your phone, right? In not the best lighting conditions, they convert the best, right? And it's exactly the same with building connection and authenticity. Like if you're in a suit and you're, you're slick and everything's perfect, the whole home studio is done perfectly, people don't connect with that anymore. Right? No. I feel anyway. And look, it comes down to your brand as well. Um, yeah. um, a good friend of mine and I used to have this sort of ongoing argument, and this is going back a few years, that he'd, he'd want to make videos on his phone. And I'm like, no, don't do it, don't do it, don't uh -huh. do it. Because I'd come from this professional television and film background where I wanted everything to look slick. And he went and made a sales video and made 30 grand in sales off a video from his iPhone. <laughs> you know, and he sort of almost did it to spite me. He said, fine, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it on my phone. You know, and he, he made all these sales and it was like, yeah, well, I can't deny it. You know, there's, there's the evidence that he made this little video on his phone. It didn't look great, but it worked. I also, having said that, believe there is a um there's a strong call to how you want your brand to be perceived and you know phones have improved you know dramatically over the you know the last few years and you know i'm sitting here in front of a window so i've got nice natural light i've got my my laptop with the little camera in my laptop going and it's great but i could do it on my phone and you still get a good result because you've got nice natural light but if you want to step your brand up a little bit then there's an argument for okay well maybe we need to uh, moved up to a, a digital SLR camera and you can get the nice look with the out of focus background and things like that. So sort of, you got to look at where your brand wants to be positioned as well, but mm -hmm. by the same token, don't let that stop you from getting started. Um, mm -hmm. Facebook live is a really good, good example of this um, sort of still in two minds as to whether I like it or not. I know it works. Uh -huh. um, I think it does look rough a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, and again, that comes down to your brand perception. But you look at it, you grab your phone, you hold it up in front of you, you hit go and you're broadcasting live on the internet. Um, so yeah, so don't let that sort of need or want to, to look good hold you back from doing something. If it's not going to be your video blogs, maybe your video blogs you want to get produced properly or you want to learn how to use digital SLR yourself. And you do them so they have that really nice look with the out of focus background and some graphics. But when you jump on Facebook Live, that's you, it's live, it's real. And I think that comes back to what you're talking about with authenticity. Mm. People want to see the real you. They, they don't want the performer because people want to know, like, and trust you. And people do business with people. They don't do business with logos or brands or corporations. So they'll do business with someone they like. So mm. be yourself and, and let people like you. Oh, awesome. Awesome advice, Paul. And one last thing here, Paul, before we start wrapping up here is, you know, I see a lot now that, you know, we're all on Facebook, we're scrolling through the feeds, and uh, there was a rumor, I don't know if it's true, right? But I want to check in with you here since you're the video guy. And like, they're saying that because of Facebook, you know, the videos autoplay, right, when you're scrolling through, and that the, the ones that actually get played or listened to are the ones that actually have like, you know, the words that pop down the bottom, right? Uh, what are your thoughts on that? And how do you actually do that in such an easier fashion than hiring someone manually sit there type up all the words and sync it up with your video to pop up at the same time do you have a tool that some of the people here could use when they're doing yeah, their videos yeah cool so um my experience is that yes if you get the captions on your video it, it does work better um mm -hmm. we do a lot of video advertising for our clients so we actually run facebook ad campaigns uh, using video ads and we find that the click through rate is higher on videos when we have included the um, subtitles. So now we just do it by default with all our clients videos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, 
it's really interesting that Facebook counts a video view as three seconds. Yeah. So if someone's scrolling through their news feed and they pause on your video just long enough to go, what's this? And then carry on. That counts as a view. So people get all excited and, you know, people talk about, Oh, I got 10,000 views on my video. It's like, yeah, but how many people took any action because of it? Um, or how many people had any idea to know what it's about? So there's a couple of things. This is why it's really important for me to start a video with a question. Yep. Um, because it's going to give people that opportunity to straight away know whether they're interested in it or not. Yeah, and having the text on screen, yeah, vitally important. Uh, how we handle it, we use a company called Rev.com, R-E-V.com. Uh, they do transcriptions and things, but they also do um, captions, uh, subtitles. Oh, yeah. They charge a dollar a minute um, because most of the videos we're doing it for are, are one, two, you know, up to five minutes. It, it's not a huge expense. Um, you know, if you were doing long form, if you had a 60-minute video or anything, then I'd probably be looking towards Upwork or, or something like that because you don't need to pay $60 to get that done when you can pay $20, $25 to get that done. Uh, but Rev.com, I, I love their service. I've been using them for at least a couple of years. Um, they're fast. They're very accurate. Uh, mm. Really, do I have any problems with the transcriptions that they've done? Um, and it's quick and easy and you know, like with the captions for Facebook they send back the SRT file um, you just need to change the name of it Facebook wants it in a specific order so you just change the name of it upload it and away you go Wow awesome and I can attest to rev.com too and I've used them when I, I was writing my book I just read out like you know, my chapters and they just converted it so quickly and you're right man they're really great so highly recommend Rev. Awesome, Paul. Great recommendations, man. We'll add these into the show notes too. And Paul, there's one question I know we're talking about it off there is that I know that you've created this whole business here. It's the video ties and the visual marketing side of things so that you could actually be online and you could be living and working and traveling wherever you wanted to. And talk us through this, man. I mean, like, did you always expect it to be like this or did this, was this just a pure accident on how it came about? Um. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I guess I probably, if I thought back and thought about it, then no, I didn't expect it to be like this. Um, I've always enjoyed traveling. Uh, and I think being settled in one place sort of has never really been a huge part of my life. When I, when I was growing up as a young kid, my dad was in the military. Um, mm -hmm. So we got transferred around. So I went to something like six different primary schools. Um, you know, before I even started high school, I'd already been to six different schools. Yeah. And then, so got into high school and finished high school and then moved again. And yeah. so we've always sort of been moving around. Um, but for me personally, um, you know, originally from New Zealand, now I live in Australia. Um, my family and actually my two kids live in New Zealand these days. Yeah. So um, I like spending a lot of time back there with them. I like spending time with my family and obviously as much time as I can with my kids. Um, while I like the lifestyle and, and um, actually, for me, the health benefits of living on the Gold Coast, uh, which funnily enough, uh, I, I grew up as an asthmatic kid. And every time I go back to Wellington, my asthma flares up and I have symptoms and I don't have that when I live in the warmer, drier climate. Uh -huh. um, so that was sort of a big catalyst for me was to be able, once my kids went back to New Zealand, was mm -hmm. to be able to freely move backwards and forwards. Um, and still be able to go to school events and sports events and, and things like that um, as friendly as I can. And then, um, you know, my, my fiance now, we love to travel as well. Last year we spent eight months in Bali um, just to try something different and try living somewhere different. And, and that was a big test for the business actually, because um, up to that point it was, I'd go somewhere for a week or go somewhere for 10 days um, mm -hmm. and you know, you can get away with a lot, but being away completely for eight months, um, it was like, it either worked or it didn't, and it, and it did work really well. So yeah, I've, I've worked hard at setting the business up so that it, it fits my lifestyle. Um, my team are all remote. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I have, um, a couple of contractors here in Australia that still um, aren't not, not here on the coast. Well, you know, they are both in Sydney and occasionally I'll fly one of them up to the Gold Coast and we'll do some face to face stuff. But, you know, there in Sydney, I've got a team in the Philippines as well. Um, so it's all remote as long as we've got our computers or these days, even just our phones. Yeah. Um, you know, you can pretty much run the business and keep things going. So it's, I won't say it's been easy to get it to this point. There's been a lot of sort of learnings and lessons and, and things, but 
yeah, it's at the point now where as long as I can pick up my computer or my phone and go, then I can yeah. be working anywhere in the world, which is pretty cool. Yeah, man. It sounds like you have the right systems in place and the right processes and yeah. the teams know what they need to do. And that's what we do now with our new business as well as helps helping people, you know, solopreneurs scale up so they can go be remote, right? Be that digital nomad, go travel, be with their family. And I love that you bring up the phone because a funny story, Paul, I mean, like my laptop broke when I was back in Singapore a, a few months ago for two weeks. I literally had to do all my work on my lap on my phone because right? my laptop burnt itself out. And I'm like, oh my God, kind of freaking out. But then after, if you have the right systems in place, then you can still make it work. You know? yeah. It's not ideal, but you can still make it work. Yeah, and, it might not be know, fun, but it definitely works. Oh yeah, man. You, all, the, all the pinching and the, the panning out so you can see stuff is, is, is hilarious, but you know, it's, it's possible. And this is what happens when you can scale up a business in a way that gives you that freedom, which is like what you're living right now. And that's beautiful to see, man. It's pretty crazy how you think that the world's changed. Uh, when I first left high school, I went to work for um, the Bank of New Zealand. Mm-hmm. And we just had these massive computers. And, you know, this was the biggest branch of the bank in the country. And, and you'd go in there at lunchtime and there were 24 telestations in our branch. Wow. And at lunchtime every day, there'd be 24 tellers and there'd be queues of people every lunchtime, you know, lining up to use the teller and do their banking transactions and things like that. I do all of my banking. <laughs> I don't remember the last time I went into a bank. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I try to avoid it, man. I don't even like lining up in the bank. Yeah. yeah so the world has definitely changed, but it's, it's opened up more possibilities and options and all the tools that are, are available to us. Uh, to you know, to work these remote businesses and, and you know, be a digital nomad, run a lifestyle business, I guess, uh, are amazing, and I'm very grateful that they all exist and give me the opportunity to live the lifestyle that I do. Uh, awesome, Paul. And so, Paul, as we start wrapping up the show, we're going to go into our quick fire question rounds. Okay, and we're going to start off with our signature question here, Paul. It's called the time travel moment. Right? It's where you know you could go back to any moment in your life. And talk to little Paul and give him one piece of advice. When would you go back to him? What would you tell him? Man? Wow. <laughs> this is a quick question. <laughs> um, I think the advice would be to, when you're faced with tough decisions, to, to go with your heart. Um, you know, I go back a few years ago um, and obviously I've, I've divorced from my children's mother and things and, and the envi- environment around that. And the, the, it was a horrible situation that we were in, but I think at the end of the day, following my heart and making that decision was a really good thing to do. So if you're in times of making tough decisions, just go with what your heart, make the decision quickly and move on. Mm, great man. Great advice. Next question I have for you, Paul is, you know, you've obviously done a lot of, digital marketing you've read a lot you've studied a lot you know, about videos as well i mean if if there was one book that was an absolute must be for anyone who wants to I guess, improve themselves in terms of their marketing skills what would you recommend Ooh, um i just recently read a book that was really good and really relevant to me um it was called built to sell mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um I can't remember the name of the author, sorry, but the book is called Built to Sell. Uh, And it's written as a story about a guy who who owns a a graphic design business. And it's all about creating productized services. So a lot of service-based businesses are run by the owner and they're reliant on the owner. This was all about actually turning them into products so that you can build an actual business where it has actual value and can become a saleable asset. So many service service businesses, which as coaches and trainers and speakers, you know, that's what we do. It it all revolves around us and we offer a service, but there's no asset value to it. If we're not in it, it doesn't work. Um, Mm. So the ability to actually turn that into a product and create a a tangible asset from your business Mm. is is really strong and valuable. Um, So it's not necessarily about marketing, but it's definitely about business. And yeah, I'd highly recommend that's a great book for people who are in a a service-based business. It's called Built to Sell. Awesome, man. We'll add that to the show notes and it sounds like something I got to read as well. You know, the last thing we want is always to be dependent on us, right? The the service provider, the only person who does it uh, and knows it all because it's up here in our heads. 
can you know, take that out and, and systemize it so that other people can actually do it or you train minions that are like mini paws running around doing it, right? Yeah, that's exactly it. And the book is a story, so you can just relate it straight to your own business. And it's about the graphic design guy who was doing all of this stuff. Mm. Yeah, you just go, okay, well, that, if that's me, and then he did this, what is that for me and my business? So it's, it's really easy to read. It's an easy read and easy to relate to. Awesome, man. Awesome. Cool. Next question I have for you, Paul, is this, and this is something that's brand new, and I thought I'd ask you this because I think you're the right guy to ask this, is where do you see the next step for video advertising, for digital marketing? Because, you know, we saw a lot of, you know, Facebook recently went from, you know, like we look at the journey of Facebook advertising, like from the text copy now to images, and now it looks like to the canvases and the videos. What do you think is next in terms of digital marketing? Would that be virtual reality or what are you looking at? Um, I, I think we're going to see big advances sort of towards um, interactivity. Um, mm -hmm. VR is going to be a big part of that in terms of virtual reality. But I think mm -hmm. also just in terms of video and you as the consumer having more choices as to what happens or what you want to watch. So you might watch something, then there might be a couple of options and you can choose left or right and, and you know, and you'll get new options. So I just think it's, it's that interactivity uh, is going to grow because it's going to immerse you as the consumer more in that experience of, of being marketed to um, gotcha. creating experiences is such a big part of marketing. You look at something like um, the Apple shop, you know, you get past an Apple store in any shopping mall and generally it's full of people. <clears throat> excuse me and it's not because they're all in there buying product but they're all in there playing with the ipads or playing with the phone or checking their email on the free wi-fi or you know whatever it is so, so apple have created an experience and i think in terms of video and online marketing you'll see more of that you'll see interaction and interactivity um doing that to create more experiences and then virtual reality still pretty early i mean it's pretty amazing i've had to play with some cool vr technology now um, but it is still pretty early on for that. Mm. But that'll become more and more of it. Um, a good friend of mine, a guy called Monty Hook, runs a business called Easy VA. Oh, yeah. um, he's building out a software product that's all around um, um, connection and meetings and things like that for running your business. And, and, and there's, uh, you know, I can see with what he's doing, I can see virtual reality, um, virtual reality playing a part of that. I mean, imagine sitting down at your desk, putting your VR headset on and you're sitting at the boardroom table with all your business partners or your team mm -hmm. and you can see them and look at them and they're all having that same experience. I think that level of connection that exists uh, now will just go through the roof if we can have that experience. So that'll come. Oh, awesome, man. Awesome. And as we wrap up here, Paul, I mean, like, this has been an awesome chat, man. This has been learning more from you, you and understanding video and sharing that and then seeing the future of what, where that's happening next. Now, I mean, I appreciate you jumping on the show, man. And so for the people who want to learn more about yourself and to learn more about video marketing, where's the best place they should head to, man? Uh, look, they can jump to my website, which is videoties.com.au. That's video, T-I-S-E, dot .com .au. Um, You know, you can see on there some of the videos we've created. There's some blogs there about video marketing, etc. Or just connect with me on Facebook. It's facebook.com forward slash Paul Holland. Just connect with me there. Send me a direct message. Have a chat. You know, I'm always happy and open to chat to, to anyone about anything, really. Mm -hmm. Awesome, man. Awesome. So, Paul, man, once again, thank you for jumping on the show, man, and sharing your wisdom here. It's been an absolute pleasure just learning more about video with you, brother. Awesome, man. Thank you. I'm, I'm honored to have been invited on. It's been great talking with you. <laughs> awesome, man. And, guys, this wraps up another episode of the Forge Your Life podcast here today with the video master himself, Paul Holland. And I know this, I mean, we can't keep this video away from the world. We can't hide this message that Paul's been sharing here on the show here. So we want to get it out there. I know that is what I want. That's what Paul wants as well. So make sure you head on over to iTunes to rate the show and give us, you know, the ratings that you think we, we deserve. If it's one star, fine. I'll give I'll kick Paul off the show, right? But if it's five stars, we'll bring him back on. And otherwise, we need to get the message out there, his message and all the other guests as well. And remember, guys, you can head on over to richardfood.com where I'll share with all the other resources that Paul has brought on the show here today. And of course, finally, guys, remember to go out there, go live with love, go smash it. And I'll see you again on the next one. Bye for now.